Hey guys, every once in a while it's cool to do a little update and just check out uh, how bike's holding up. So several years ago, Stromer had, had kind of loaned me this demo model. This is their ST1 Limited. Really nice electric bike and I, I love how fluid, dynamic that hub motor is. It's got recoup, two levels of recoup. It just works great. Uh, however, it's uh, not perfect, you know, and over time you get to, to see that. You get to see like what plays out on an electric bike. I know a lot of the reviews I do are like brand new e-bikes and you kind of can't tell. It's like, is this gonna hold up? Or what, what are the problems gonna be? And that's why I have the forums and everything and the comments are completely wide open. So I rely on you guys for that, for help with that. Uh, but with this bike, I actually got the chance to see for myself, and I want to give you some of that feedback. So first, I loaned it to my uncle. He's a chiropractor in Loveland, Colorado, and he used it to get back and forth from work every day. He really liked the high-speed operation. You know, this is a speed pedal, like class three, up to 28 miles per hour. It's just like a race car. I mean, it's got this carbon fiber fork. It's a little bit of vibration dampening. We added this body float seat post suspension from Sierra Cycles. They, they rebranded this as Connect now, but they still sell this. And they even have carbon fiber versions. This one's just aluminum alloy, a little bit heavier. Um, yeah, there were a lot of little upgrades, but we tried to keep most of the touch points the same. I really like the saddle. It's a ST1 branded Stromer, but I think this is actually an Ergon saddle, um, which I think is owned by Velo. Velo seems to do like all the grips and stuff. Then we have an Ergon GS1. It's like a sportier version of their GP1, which is a little curvier. Really like those locking, uh, very nice. And then we added this water bottle cage down here and this is like a side entry cage so you can easily get to it uh, while you're riding and just, I appreciate that. Um, this is a specialized bottle cage by the way. I'm gonna link to all the accessories and stuff in the description uh, and I'll try to answer questions as best I can. The bike came with these alloy fenders, really quiet and, and sturdy, love those. These are the same tires we've been using the whole time. So these are the Schwabi Big Ben, they have the Performance Line Green Guard puncture protection, really like that, but they didn't have the reflective sidewall stripes. Maybe a little accents, a little bit of reflective stuff there, mostly just branding. Uh, the hydraulic disc brakes have been good they have good stopping power these are magura great levers and there's even like a kind of a recoup sensor in just the right one it didn't have it in the left one and they don't have motor inhibitors uh, it, it's not exactly like that it's more of a recoup activation but again this is a torque sensing electric bike with kind of a strain sensor back here the backlight is nice but it's not super super bright and it didn't have like the the bright mode when you pull the brake lever. That's something that Stromer has introduced in recent models. So they've upgraded and improved a lot of that. And you know, with the ST1X and the ST2, they have a display that's built right into the tube there. So you kind of have to look down to get to it versus the old display, uh, this plastic thing, kind of ugly. You know, you really have to reach over pretty far to adjust the power levels and it cracked on us so there's this plastic hinge and just a you know for such an important part i look the connectors they're sealed they're threaded but for such an important part here it's just a tiny little plastic hinge and we had to drill a hole through and use a zip tie to secure this and it's not really secure now but that's if that goes the whole bike's kind of done you know that's that's such a bummer considering everything else is so sturdy you got the supernova headlight this one you can even like the label the brand there supernova it shines out the side a little bit so really fancy stuff and like the rack and the, the rear fender everything is has been really bulletproof these gearless hub motors um i think this is tdcm i mean very nice but heavy this bike is heavy and it's got the the mid-mounted battery right there that fits in kind of closes in so long story short the things that that kind of failed or had to be adjusted were the brakes the hydraulic disc brakes needed to be bled like this one in particular i think had some more issues and so my uncle would take it into the shop and they they redid this a couple times and you'll see that they left like a huge loop right here of just extra length in case they had to adjust it again so they went through and then they circled it around and went all the way down and while they were doing that they they must have been doing some tune-up and i think fixing the derailleur in the back so shimano sora triggers up there and then the dior xt derailleur i, th I think he actually bought this and then had to replace it at one point because it, it broke or failed because he'd, he'd been riding this a whole lot and you can see the sprockets are they're dirty and they're they're worn. This is after a nice tune-up, by the way, that you're seeing it. This is not the dirty, like the way my uncle 
uh, handed it to me. So I think there was some drivetrain stuff, even though this is a hub motor, you ride a bike long enough and you're gonna need to do some, some adjustments. These pedals, I really dislike. The, the cage style pedals like this. And you can see they're, they're kind of scratched up a little bit. They offer decent traction, but they're just sort of small for someone who has bigger feet. So I'm always pointing out the Welgo, like the bigger platforms that are like BMX style pedals. They're just, they're bigger and they have these pins that are a little bit more grippy. But when you lean the bike and stuff, you can have pedal strike, which is where the pedal hits the concrete and kind of scuffs and might even, you know, send you into a bit of a, an unstable ride position or a moment and could crash hopefully not but with such a fast powerful bike that's worth noting so the disc brakes hydraulic disc brakes had to be bled and adjusted the shop was they didn't do a great job when they rerouted this cable they put it on that side of the frame and it sort of you can see that there's some scratches there you can actually use clear uh, box tape to protect your frame but they also sell you know little plastic stickers you can stick on there to keep the wires from rubbing and you know, scratching up the paint. It's such a beautiful paint job. This is a limited edition bike too. So, I mean, this is this is like a pretty expensive product and you want it to look nice, but you can see that there are some, some scratches here on the frame. I think the front fender, yeah, there it is, took, took some damage at one point. I don't know if he crashed or what happened, but you know, this bike has been used. It hasn't just been babied that whole time. And you're riding at those higher speeds. I think the bike's probably tipped over. You can see some more scratches back here. The original kickstand that it came with are those really annoying ones where as soon as you tip the bike up at all, it's spring loaded and it goes whoosh, and it like it stows, it self stows. And this is a European requirement, I think, and it, it just I just really dislike it because it seems to make these bikes very unstable. And I, maybe the idea is that the kickstand won't like flop down while you're riding, but most kickstands have a really solid spring to stay up. Or maybe it's as soon as you start riding, you don't want anything in your way because these are more like vehicle level specifications in Europe where it has to have now the brake light, a super bright headlight, the kickstand, the, the brake levers with these big balls at the end so you don't accidentally slip off, I guess. I, I get it. And you know, this we got a through axle up here. This is this is a beefier bike, especially for a bike that's several years old, 180 millimeter disc brakes. I just don't like that kickstand at all. It really bothered me. So I bought this cheap whatever you know kickstand at the shop stows pretty nicely it's not adjustable but at least it keeps the bike nice and straight up so that's one of the upgrades that i did um, i definitely recommend something like that if you have this bike but of course there's no rear provision for a kickstand back here so you get the pedal lock which is something i i really dislike too when you're walking it out of your garage so the upgrades coming back to this nice bottle cage that was a good one uh, really handy got this little pack for the back Got a little tool in here. I put it in a neoprene pouch just so it wouldn't scratch like a phone if you put your phone in there. These little tire levers, little flat kit. So I, I like this pack because it had a little you know, strap on the back with reflective tape and you could add another light back here. Um, my dad loves lights, so you know I took it from my uncle and passed it to my dad. I'm kind of passing around getting some feedback and he found these super bright lights on Amazon. And I mean, they're just at night, like they really stand out. Uh, and there's several different modes and stuff. They're pretty affordable and they're USB rechargeable. So that's nice. They've got a quick disconnect. You take it off, charge it inside if you want to. He has another one up front. So in addition to the really bright supernova headlight that helps you see where you're going, this one helps you be seen and it's up high. So he's, you know, really all about safety. If you weren't stowing your your phone in that that pack in the back you could also put it in this little you know handlebar mount and use it for gps it gets a little crowded up here again especially with that you know cheaper looking display um but yeah you put your phone in here and then it's got this rubberized thing that kind of grabs the sides of the phone so that it's not going to fall out when you're going really fast because that would be a pretty sad day um you know i i don't know how much he uses that but the the big takeaway here for him was comfort same thing for me i really care about kind of being upright a little bit, being able to talk to my friends or spot traffic. It's fun to be like a race car where you're all lean forward, but it hurts, you know, especially on a bike that doesn't have suspension. Like, yeah, these tires are a little bit bigger and we have lowered the PSI and kind of balanced everything out. The carbon fork helps, but you know, the, the body float suspension post was, was a huge deal. And then these handlebars. So I actually ordered these special um, just off Amazon again, it was like 25 bucks. It used to have more of a flat handlebar that required that you lean forward pretty far because this is a longer stem. I think it's like 110 millimeters. Um, 
Whereas this one, it's got a little bit of a rise and it sweeps back maybe a little bit longer too, not too long, but then we, you know, remounted all this hardware. That's when this uh, display panel cracked. Um, again, I'm, I'm very careful. I work on bikes all the time. So this was just, you know, being in the sun and being older, it dried out and cracked. So anyway, these, these handlebars, they really change the body position. They, they bring him up and back a little bit. Uh, we're able to raise the saddle. So he's getting full leg extension. It's really working well. So light handlebar, and then a little bit of cargo, some comfort and locks. So see this little like wire thing here. This is like a motorcycle helmet lock, but the idea is it's going through the saddle and the suspension post and the bag back here and then the frame. So no one can just use that quick release and steal this $200 suspension seat post or his little goodie bag without doing at least a little bit of theft, you know, clipping it or something like that. It's still possible, but this is like a, a minor deterrent. And then we've got just a cheap whatever combo lock on here right now, but you know, I've been thinking about using, SKS has these anywhere adapters that could make another pair of bottle cage boss mounts here. And, and that would be good for a folding lock and get a decent one from Abus that's a little bit more secure. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the front wheel because it's not quick release. Uh, but you know, back to like, maybe that's how the fender got scratched. And then probably one of the biggest things safety wise, but that you can't even hardly tell is there's a whole bunch of reflective stickers on this bike that were added by us but they're black, so they really blend in nicely. Now you can probably see this one because the texture, there's the aluminum fender and then there's that, that shiny part. That's actually a reflector. So there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, kind of went crazy. There's one here, one on the back, and then the same thing on the other side. They're all over the place, including on this helmet. So my dad has like kind of a bigger head and he had to order this special like orthopedic large helmet to, to fit right. Did all these adjustments because you're not supposed to be able to push it back or tip it forward. Uh, it's more of a mountain biking helmet. And see, it's got the reflective stickers all over it too. They didn't make white. They only have black. Obviously, you know, I'm a fan of the white, something that's a little bit more visible. Um, but that's, that's kind of nice. So, you know, we're getting ready to pass this back to Stromer and stuff and move on to testing some other bikes. I realize this is just kind of a random deep dive and talking about you know what we've learned <laughs> forgot one here's a, another reflector there we just went crazy um, but i hope this helps you you know i care a lot about safety care about comfort because if you're if you're not comfortable you're probably not going to want to ride as much um, and I, I really feel like we took a bike here that was super sporty and fast and made it something that was more enjoyable to ride especially for these you know my uncle my dad they're a little bit older and um, even me with my knee sensitivity, my neck sensitivity. That's what we did. Well guys, I think that's about it. It's a lot of fun to show these things and get your feedback. I'm gonna post this in the Electric Bike Review forums along with links to all the different accessories and stuff. I've got a little area that's like profile and bike garage and it's fun to share. I love to see what you guys have too. Um, a lot of really creative stuff out there. Have fun. I'll put a link in the description of the video and uh, ride safe.